What's going on everybody? So glad you decided to join us today. This is our next video for our youth group at Waxahachie First United Methodist Church. To start things off again, I wanted to share another video that I love to watch. This is my other son, Luis, and he is refusing to leave our bedroom in a very interesting way. Go. exercising have you been walking I know that going outside has been a huge huge positive every one of you guys that I heard from at our zoom meetings this past week has said that you've been outside way more than normal and I know that I definitely have as well but as far as in-home stuff is there anything you're doing to just keep that activity going Well, let's switch gears here for a quick second. I want to give you guys a few announcements. First, we have our Zoom meetings. Sundays, 1 o'clock for junior high, 2 o'clock for senior high. These might change after this week, and here's what I mean. We opened our own Zoom account with the church so we could actually uh, lengthen the meeting times instead of being cut short to that 40 minutes. So, this week, we're going to have a longer meeting time, but we'll keep it at one hour so that we can still have our one o'clock to two o'clock blocks for the junior high and senior high. But depending on how that goes, we might push the senior high a little bit further, or either way, we'll figure out a different time gap so that we can all be together in a better way. Second, Zoom will also use on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. We'll be having a live worship service, just the music and singing, and please don't turn your mics off because I think it would be awesome to hear all of your voices. So that's gonna be happening 3 p.m. every Sunday, and everyone in our church is welcome to join but obviously this is primarily for the youth group. So bring it on, youth choir. <laughs> Mission trip! So far, they are still saying that this is going to happen. Matter of fact, I got another email yesterday saying all of these details about how we're gonna be spending money as leadership in this trip. So, so far from what they're talking about, they're not planning on backing out of this trip at all. So for now, sign up. I'm gonna leave a link below in the description after this video. Just get to that website and register your family. If you want to go, I think this is again, gonna be an amazing experience. Please sign up. All right guys, let's switch gears one more time. If you would, bow with me where you are and we'll pray together for this week's devotional. Heavenly Father, I pray again to you that you would guide us, that you would speak to each and every one of us through me, and that you would show us something new, something um, inspiring, something that uh, moves us, something new that you can uh, incorporate into our daily life, as odd as it might be right now. I pray so much that you would keep us all safe, that you would keep our family members and whoever in our life and beyond, that whoever is dealing with this right now, which we all are, but especially those that are hospitalized, um, can feel your healing touch. We love you and we thank you so much. Your name we pray and we all say, amen. So let's start this off with a question. Do you ever find it hard to love the people 
that you are around? Okay, I know that that's a really basic question. I know that's kind of silly to say because of course we find it hard, especially right now in the time that we're in. Why wouldn't we find it hard? We're surrounded by them constantly. I am surrounded by my kids constantly, but I love them. Do they um, tend to bother me a little bit? Sure, but I love them. Will I ever stop loving them? No. Will I be a little annoyed by them sometimes? Of course, but I love them. So the discussion today is love. Let's watch this quick video and let's talk about it after. Loving people is hard. People are mean. People are selfish. People let us down. The world says, hey, each of these are reasons to stop loving others. But Jesus calls us to something bigger. He calls us to show grace to all people. Why? Because he has shown grace to us. We have been given forgiveness that we do not deserve. Even though we fall way short of being perfect every day, the Lord still chooses to love us. In fact, grace is the difference between our situational-based love and God's unconditional love. We'll say things like, I'll love people that aren't me. I'll love people that aren't selfish. I'll love people that don't let me down. Grace allows us to see past people's brokenness and love them as they are, because we have an understanding of God's grace for us. God sees us as loved, and once we realize God's grace in our lives, we can truly love others, seeing them as God does. these short videos because they're super clear. They say the whole message at once, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into this because especially with the time that we're in right now, obviously it's hard to love people, but we need to always. In the times like this is when we can really test ourselves to see how much we can really love the people in our life, the ones that are difficult to love, our siblings, or our parents that are telling us what to do. How can we constantly love them? And I'm gonna challenge you with one question. Do you love you? In the Bible it says to love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Sometimes we don't love ourselves. Have you thought about that? Sometimes we look at ourselves and we are um, not feeling it, uh, we're not, you know, happy with what we see. Um, we're not happy with what we've achieved or accomplished or um, maybe the world says or our friends say or our peers say we should be this way. We should look this way. And then we start to think that about ourselves. But I'm going to challenge you with this, that for you to truly love your neighbor, you need to learn to love yourself first. Now, what does that look like for you to truly love yourself, for you to love yourself the way that God loves you? Could you imagine the amount of joy that you would feel, the amount of confidence that you might have? And this is not a bad confidence. I believe this is a very good confidence, a belief that you are good enough, a belief that you are pretty enough handsome enough, a belief that you are smart enough, because you are. Do you love you? If we can figure that out, and if we can come to the answer of yes, then we'll know how to love others. I bring this up all the time, but I think it's just a really good um, example that a lot of people, most people, deal with. But when I drive my car and somebody cuts me off or somebody brake checks me or they, I don't know, I just don't like the way they're driving because I'm the king of the road and I know what's best. 
I know how I'm supposed to drive and I know how everybody else is supposed to drive. It's funny that before we moved here, everyone said, oh, those Texas drivers. But man, I would say the same for Oklahoma drivers. I would say the same for most drivers because if they're not me, they're not doing it right. If they don't go fast enough or whatever it is. So I've got my complaints. And my wife would say that I've got my road rage because I want to honk. Or <laughs> she always gets on to me because if someone does something like cuts me off, I might honk, but I always drive past them and then I'll always turn and look at them. <laughs> That's it. And she, <laughs> she puts me in my place because she'll look back at me and say, oh, you big man, does that make you feel tough and strong? You look down that old lady or that, you know, young kid or whoever. And they might not ever look back, but I always just want to look at them so I could just give them my eyes up. In those times, those people for me, weren't people. They were things that abused me or things that got in my way or things that aren't doing it the right way. Not people. Have you ever done that? Have you ever dehumanized somebody because they didn't do it the way you wanted them to or they did something to offend you? So instead of thinking them as a person, now they are just an object that I have to get past or have to deal with. This is the problem. When we start to look at others as if they weren't valuable, as if they weren't God's children. What's funny is, that if I saw the same person that cuts me off on a random day at church, it could be a little elderly woman. And if I saw her at church, I might give her a hug. If anything, I'd greet her with a large smile. But if she, same person, did that on the road, cut me off, whatever. That same little sweet woman. I would, I would give her that, that same look. How is that? How is that possible? How can we do that? So back to the earlier thought. So back to the earlier thought. We do that with ourselves. We let the world label us and then we ourselves don't accept ourselves. We don't love ourselves. How can we not? How could we just abandon ourself like that? I hope you never treat yourself that way. I hope you never think negatively that way. My son gets into trouble all the time. Emilio. <laughs> he is my oldest. And I don't know if me and my wife are hardest on him because he's the older child, because we expect more from him, because he's so smart, we just assume that he should know better. Um, but he gets into trouble a lot. And it breaks my heart sometimes the things that he says when he has to go to timeout. 
I'll send him to time out for something little like, you know, pushing his brother or I'll send him to time out for something essentially small, like not sitting the right way at the table. And then he'll argue and complain or talking back or I don't know, but it'll be little things that I'll remind him and he will forget because he's six. But whenever he does, I'll say, go to timeout. And when he does, he'll say in a loud voice, I hate myself. I'm the worst. I don't know where he got those ideas. I don't know if I or my wife did something to make him think this. But as soon as he started saying that, I got angry. I went in and I made him stop. I explained to him that that wasn't right, that he should never think that about himself. Why, for a six-year-old, is it already so easy to have a negative thought about yourself? What in this world has made that okay? You are child of God. That means you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are smart. You are strong. You are kind. You are enough. believe that? I do. If you're going to love your neighbor, if you're going to love the hard, difficult people in your life, first you got to love yourself. Know that God made you and loves you even with the things that you do, you know what you do. Whatever wrongs you do, whatever words you say, whatever thoughts that you have that you shouldn't, God knows, and he still loves you. Love yourself, then you can love others. <laughs>